The vault -Tec Corporation from the Fallout series is easily a contender for the evilest company in all of media. They took advantage of the world's total nuclear annihilation in order to perform their sick and twisted experiments on unsuspecting people just trying to hide for their lives. Now, I can somewhat understand their reasoning, but what I cannot stand for is their complete and utter disrespect of the scientific method. Now, when I say scientific method, your mind might jump back to in school learning about the actual quote-unquote scientific method. And to be honest, I couldn't really care less about their lack of forming a true hypothesis. A quick refresher on the scientific method, though, as it's not really even considered when vault -Tec is conducting what they dare to call scientific experiments. The scientific method is a set of six stages that is to be followed when performing any sort of scientific research. It starts with when you make an observation or a question, for example, stuff that is frozen lasts longer. I wonder if we could do that to a person. Then you perform some research, like figuring out the exact temperature that a human body could sustain itself at. Then you form the hypothesis. This is probably one of the most overhyped stages in the whole scientific method. And it's the idea that you're supposed to narrow down what you're experimenting into one single provable or disprovable concept. Like after total nuclear annihilation, a husband, wife, and their child can be frozen for hundreds of years and they will survive until they get thawed out and one of them gets shot. After you've formulated your hypothesis, then you can start actually testing your ideas, followed by analyzing the data and coming to some sort of conclusion. All to start back up again with a new observation. Now, I'll cut vault -Tec some slack as there wasn't really anyone left to analyze the data and form a true conclusion, but frankly, I've never once seen a proper hypothesis in my many hours of playtime in the series. Now, I could be wrong, but it kind of just seems like they were messing around and wanted to see what would happen which frankly I don't really care about. Some of the greatest inventions the world has ever seen have come from people just kind of doing stuff they thought would be cool. I mean, the scientific method was not even invented till around the 17th century at the earliest. And it's not like all scientific progress was meaningless until someone made sure to do the proper amount of research before publicly releasing their well-done conclusion. The thing I do have a problem with, however, is their disastrous defining of their independent variables. In a proper experiment, you should have at least one test group and one control group. In your control group, you're not changing anything, and vault -Tec actually does have some control vaults. Vaults 3, 8, 13, and 76 are a couple we've come across in the series. Your test group is where you can start messing with stuff. The idea is that you define a single thing you're going to change. This is your independent variable. Changing only one thing is incredibly important. Drug trials are a great example of a proper experiment. They'll have a test group that they actually give the medicine to, but their control group doesn't just not take the medicine. Instead, they take a sugar pill, known as a placebo, so that they think they're receiving an actual treatment. This way, the researchers know that anything the test group experiences that the control does not is actually due to the medication and not their brains just playing tricks on them. Now imagine some drug company comes out with a new pill that's supposed to make you really strong. They give their test that new pill and the control gets a placebo. They have the control go sit at home every day and they put the test group on a strict diet and training regimen. They make them live in a gym and have four-time Mr. Olympia champion Chris Bumstead personally walking them through every movement they make. In six months, the scientists can't go, look, the test group is 10 times stronger, it must be the pill. There's too many independent variables. Now, that seems like some crazy exaggeration, but that's basically the kind of stuff vault -Tec was doing. I want to see just how bad vault -Tec was doing at attempting to perform actual science. So I took a look at every single vault we have canonically come across and rate it on a scale from nice job, it's actually kind of a viable concept to, oh dear god, what were they thinking? I do have to differentiate between vaults that were experiments and vaults that had experiments in them. For example, Vault 22 from Fallout New Vegas was just a place for scientists to do some research on some flora, including some cool plants from the Big MT. Other examples of this include Vault 96, where they also looked at plants, but this time with some animals. Vault 87, where they worked on the Force Evolutionary Virus. Vault 81, where the researchers were testing various diseases and cures on the residents of the vault. Vault 111, where the researchers were testing cryo-freezing on the residents. As well as Vault 75, where upon entering, the parents were immediately killed. The children were put through an intense training regiment. Upon their 18th birthday, those deemed to be physically gifted were to have their genes extracted before being killed with their DNA being used to breed the next group of test subjects. The intellectually gifted were spared and trained to join the research team and continue the atrocities upon those they used to call friends, and all that remained were to be disposed of like trash. 
And then there's Vault 112, where the researcher just kind of want to chill in VR for a bit. Vault 79 and 88 don't really fit anywhere nicely, uh, with 79 being a new location for the government's gold reserves, and 88 serving as a proving ground for any new test ideas. Pulling out all the control vaults and those that were destroyed, so we didn't really know what was going on, we're left with 13 vaults with actual experiments in to take a look at. Starting off, I do need to give vault X some credit, as they have a test I don't really think was all that bad. I think their best idea was with Vault 106 from Fallout 3, in which they released some psychoactive drugs through the vent into the air. Now, I'm a big fan of this guy, barring all the death and suffering that ensued, because the only thing that sets it apart from the control vault is those drugs that were released in the air, and that one vault's about it. Every other experiment Vault Trek tried to perform has at least some flaws with it. Now, I will admit, some of these vaults are actually pretty okay, and I'm kind of just being nitpicky. Vault 12, for example, from the original Fall game, was an attempt to look at how gradual radiation exposure affects the human body, which it's a pretty solid concept, especially for the time. The way they did this, however, was by not sealing the door properly, resulting in the radiation seeping in from the outside world. There are two flaws with this idea, however. Firstly, there's no way to actually regulate how much radiation is sneaking in through that door, which makes any quantifying of real results kind of difficult. Also, you have no real idea what's sneaking in through that door. Sure, you'll get some radiation, but there might have been some kind of pathogen that was formed by the world ending that could have been the actual thing that turned everyone into their ghoulish form. Now, I'm grouping a couple vaults here together in the same category in the nitpicking area as they share the same problem, and that is in order to perform their experiment, it relies on a pretty major reduction in vault tech staff. These vaults include Vault 11, where the dwellers were forced to choose a member to be killed every year, Vault 51, where the vault was led by a supercomputer whose mission it was to find the best overseer, and Vault 94, in which the entire vault was populated exclusively for members of a non-violent community, with the exception of only one vault tech employee. I like all these concepts, but with such an intense reduction in staff, it's incredibly difficult to maintain all your other variables. If we had some evidence of a control vault with a similar reduction in staffing, I think these three could easily get my seal of approval. And now we can move on to the tests that are actively being brought down by their lack of scientific rigor. Moving forward, these experiments are so flawed in one way or another, there's really little that can be gained from analyzing the results that come out of them. The next category I'm titling, Come On, as it's vaults that I felt were pretty solid ideas and then someone just had to tack something on at the end and throw everything awry. What I imagine is that there was a bunch of vault tech employees in some room coming up with the concept for the next vault, tossing around ideas like, what if everyone was completely equal and there was no rank or status? And they're all pretty happy with it. And then someone sitting in the back of the room screams out, what if we put gambling in it? And then that's how we ended up with Vault 21. Or another example is Vault 101, in which the vault was never to be opened. And also the overseer was given complete and utter dictatorial control. Or Vault 15, where the vault's population was selected from a wide berth of different cultural and ethnic backgrounds. And also they delayed the opening of the vault by several decades. Or Vault 92, in which a high-pitched white noise is played over the speakers of the vault. And also, the vault is populated solely by the world's top musicians. Explaining these vaults can all be done in a very similar way. You state a premise, and then you say, and also. Then you go tack on another pretty major variable. The reason this starts to become such a big problem is that when you have two massive variables like this, it's really hard to pin your findings on just one of them. Looking at Vault 92 from Fallout 3, in which the residents were all top musicians and they played that high-pitched tone. When you come across it in-game, they're all dead, as they went ahead and killed each other. They may just want to wrap it up and say, white noise causes people to kill each other. But you really don't know if it wasn't just a bunch of pretentious musicians in one place. Since there was no control with just a bunch of musicians and no white noise, anything you try to glean from this vault becomes basically meaningless. To be fair, this is looking at the issue from a purely scientific perspective, and some basic human intuition can tell you it's more so likely the white noise that was the cause for the murderer's rampage, and not simply someone insulting someone else's new symphony. But the issue is that you cannot be 100% sure, and when the end result of your experiment is that a bunch of people end up dead who didn't know what they were signing up for, 100% is pretty nice to aim for. This last group only really had one extra variable, and for the most part, it made sense if you want all your choices in your vault to be made by gambling, everyone has to be equal. There can't be an authority figure to say what happens. This next year, however, is when things really start to go overboard. At this point, they've just fully given up on trying to accomplish any real scientific progress and just kind of were throwing things together. 
A good example of what I'm talking about is Vault 114 from Fallout 4. Although the vault was never completed, the experiment was that it was to be populated by solely high-class elites of Boston. However, it would be far too small. And also, they would share all their private space. And also, vault -Tec went out and hand-selected the most anti-money, anti-authoritarian person they could from the streets to run the place. Now, that's a cool idea, but I don't really know what you're hoping to get from it. If the residents killed each other, then I guess you can say if you fill a cramped area with a bunch of rich people, made them shower in the same place, and put someone that hates money in charge, they'll all kill each other, but that info is not really going to translate well to anything else. Another example is Vault 118 from the same game, which is basically just a flip of the last vault. In this one, there'd be 10 rich elites in power who ruled over 300 impoverished residents who lived in incredibly difficult living conditions. And Fallout 4 comes at us yet again with another heater, as Vault 95 gives us some more useless data. In this vault, all the residents would be junkies. The vaults would be stocked to the brim with treatment options, including detox machines, and proper resources for group meetings. Then after a couple years when everyone had overcome their addictions, a stash of chems would be uncovered, where all the dwellers would eventually relapse and the vault fell to chaos. Sure, there's some deep messaging about the powers of drugs over addiction, but the end result is far more like the ending to a Twilight Zone episode than anything else. Vault 19 is up next, where the vault had two of everything, and the residents were divided into red and blue groups at random. Things went bad and a faction war broke out, resulting in a lot of death. The vault was meant to test how tribalism could devolve into violence, but who knows, maybe people just really didn't like the color red. All these vaults felt like they had an end goal in mind, and they just threw together a bunch of stuff to get there. The last in this tier is Vault 34, in which there was an overstocked armory with incredibly lax security. They also greatly cut down on living space in order to fit in more fun stuff. They even had a swimming pool, which doesn't really seem to fit anywhere, but that sounds like it would have been fun. When I first stated the ranking system, I did explain that the final tier was, oh god, what are you thinking, and there's one single vault that holds the crown. The worst scientific concept possible. It's Vault 118, and I'm going to read verbatim from the Fallout Wiki on what was going on. Vault 108 was a social experiment studying the effects of leadership conflicts. Most management positions were to be filled by a terminally ill overseer upon entry, Power systems were designed to fail after 20 years, no entertainment was provided, and the armory was provided triple the standard ordinance. There are three commas in that explanation, and so much is going on. I guess they just wanted general chaos, so they threw a bunch of stuff together and said let it ride. This vault is from Fallout 3, and many of you mostly don't remember it, based solely on that definition. That's because it's the Gary Vault. There's just a random cloning machine in this place for no reason. Why? Every other vault in this franchise has at least some sort of connecting theme, but nope, this one was just kind of their dumping ground for other vault ideas that didn't really make the cut. And the very best thing is that everyone remembers this vault for something that's not even slightly related to what's going on. The thing though is that everyone does remember this vault. It's so haunting and mysterious and it really sticks with the player after they leave. In fact, it seems like the less scientific the vault becomes, the more intrigue it builds. Maybe the clinical nature of a purely scientific endeavor is too sterile to leave a mark, and it's much more interesting to talk about the vault that was a commentary on class structure on a micro scale, as opposed to the one that played some white noise over the loudspeakers or drug debris. At the end of the day, these all are video games, and very good ones at that. So, maybe it's okay sometimes to throw this PSG to the curb, put a dude in a room with a panther, and just say, screw it. I, I wonder what's gonna happen. <laughs>